is Just The Job. Kia ora and welcome to Just The Job. It is great to be here again this week and make sure you stick around because we have three more really exciting careers for you to take a look at. And you never know, one of them just might be what you're looking for. Plus we've got a whole lot of great advice and tips coming up that just might make that difficult career choice a bit easier. In today's show, 17 year old Evie loves travel and tourism, so she thinks a career in airport customer services might be just the job for her. Nick has a passion for houses and thinks floor and wall tiling could be up his alley. We find out if Nick's got what it takes for a job that needs a certain amount of accuracy and skill to ensure a good result for the client. And 16 year old Benjamin has already had a brief taste of what it might be like to have a career as an electrician, doing odd jobs for family friends in the industry. But how will he go when it comes to a more hands on role? But first up, let's see how Evie gets on as she finds out there's a whole lot more to airport customer services than meets the eye. My name's Evelyn, I'm 17 years old and I live here in Queenstown. I go attend Wakatipu High School and um, I'm interested in airport customer service. I think the job involves uh, dealing with different people from around the world, you know, just generally uh, making their stay in New Zealand a happy and enjoyable one. New Zealand's top tourist town, Queenstown, welcomes visitors from all over the world and most pass through the resort's airport. Hello, you must be Evie. Yes, yes. Pleased to meet you. I'm Kay, I'm the Terminal Manager and Customer Service Manager of the airport. And I'm going to show you around the airport today and show you what my job is. Sounds fun. Great, let's go. The type of person that would be good in the role of customer service would have to be very patient, they'd have to have a good sense of humour and be able to think on their feet very well. First off, security clearance is organised. You've got a lot of stuff here, what's it all for? This here is my pager. If there's a fire anywhere in the airport, it'll go off here where it is. I have to wear that at all times. There's also a mobile for problems with tenants, a mobile for airport admin, and a two-way for parking problems. Very busy. I'm very busy. Lucky I have big hands. <laughs> <laughs> my first duty every morning, Evie, is to make sure the airport is operational for all domestic flights. Okay. I see my job here at the airport as the oil and the machine. I have to keep things turning over, and it's not just the customers that come through off the aircraft I have to keep happy. It's the tenants and it, everyone. I have to keep everyone moving, everything flowing. A safe environment, a happy environment, and also keep my managers happy with what I'm doing. I really like the tourism industry. Um, I'm also interested, interested in languages, and uh, I love to travel. So I think going into uh, the tourism industry would be a good blend of, hopefully, my skills and uh, my interests. Anyone that's got a problem, they look for the customer service to help them. You have to really learn to think on your feet. You've got to be confident. You've got to be able to just put yourself out there and solve problems. Kay's problem solving is endless. There's lost passports, lost luggage, lost children, and even swarms of lost bees. Not all jobs, though, are problems to be solved. OK, Evie, we're going to go out airside. So can you put this jacket on, please? Yep. We're going to escort some people out to their private jet. How exciting. It's not Justin Timberlake or oh. Shania Twain. Oh, can you make it next time uh, Hugh Jackman? No? <laughs> I had no idea I wanted to do this career, actually. I trained to make chocolate. Did you do the Milford track? We did, part of it. Oh, part of it? I an injury. Oh, no. Bye-bye. Customer service agents can be trained on the job and they can also work towards national certificates. Kay's decided to put Evie through a few of the training exercises. First, common greetings for different cultures. Chinese first, OK? okay. So that's ni hao with a nice bow to the waist. Yeah. Very good. The greeting in German is guten morgen and you make direct eye contact and you give a really good guten morgen. Guten morgen. <laughs> The Eskimos' official greeting is... <laughs> <laughs> now a disgruntled customer. I've left my bag on the aircraft and it's got my cell phone, all my tickets, my money. I've asked three people to help me. What I'll do is I get the uh, cleaners to... I'll get the cleaners notified. Will that take long? I haven't got time. No. I haven't got time to muck around. No, it won't take five minutes. OK, I'll get the OK, notified I'll five minutes, it but it's quarter past now, so I'm waiting. OK. Thank you. Aren't I a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Irate customers are always difficult to deal with 
and no one likes to do it. But um, I think if you put yourself in their position, then um, you feel a bit of empathy for them and then that way it gives you the um, motivation to get things done quickly and gives them satisfaction there. Good one, Evie. Try one more. Okay, now I understand you're not well, ma'am. All right, here's your sick bag if you need it. Thank you. We'll take care of your baggage too. Do you have your receipt with you so we can get the bags? No. No, okay, we'll find them for you then. Evie, you did really well with that. I was really pleased. And you covered all the bases. You were great. Thank you. You can come and nurse me any time. <laughs> OK? Thank you. Come on, we've got other things to do. OK. We have international flights today, Evie, so I'm just going to check the building to make sure everything's OK. OK. Come with me. Check all the lights are on and the air conditioning's going well. It's a good temperature. OK. Everything in here's fine. At the moment, this area is all domestic, so we lock down this door, which now separates the international customers from our domestic ones. OK. The day's been pretty hard on the feet, so is Evie still keen? I've enjoyed uh, playing different skills to different scenarios and um, getting some hands-on activities done, so that was really fun. Thank you so much. You've done so well. Thank you. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to come here. You're welcome. You'll do so well in the Royal Customer Service. I hope you keep it up. Yep. There's a national certificate in airport operations which features three strands. Airport customer service, airport maintenance and airport safety. Individuals wishing to undertake a role in this area should have reached a minimum of NCEA Level 2. Core subjects to study should include English, Maths, Computer Studies and Languages. Working in an airport customer service role could lead to further career opportunities within the aviation sector or if preferred within a travel and tourism workplace. Aviation is a booming industry here in New Zealand and globally, which is leading to an increase in the career options available. Well, Evie certainly looked at home in the world of airport customer services. And maybe after watching Evie, that's something you want to find out more about. If it is, then stick around because i got more details on that shortly. After the break, we find out if Nick's got a talent for mixing mud, a crucial aspect when it comes to floor and wall tiling. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job, where we look at a whole range of options to help you learn more about what it is you could be doing as a career. Now, do you like to be creative, but you also have good math skills and enjoy working with your hands? And keep watching as we join Nick to find out what's involved in a career as a floor and wall tiler. Hi, my name's Nick Hugh. I'm 17. I'm from Hamilton. I think floor and wall tiling is interesting because I have a passion for um, houses. Well, in Hamilton's rapidly expanding leafy suburbs, demand for floor and wall tiling is booming. Mike Savage, who has been tiling for 36 years, is to be Nick's mentor for a couple of days. I think the perfect trainee would be, um, would be good at maths, have good common sense, and a good um, willing aspiration to work. First job, mixing the mud or tiling cement. That's variable speed, so don't pull it full on. A new tiled area has been planned in the hallway by the front entrance. So you want a good level of mud so you get a good even plane on the surface. And that all reflects in the floor level, because floors are never true. So it's up to you as a tiler to find a good plane. Why is it stripy? If you have a solid foundation like that, it'll key to the tile, but it won't let the air out. Okay. So that lets the air out. Nearly halfway, time for Nick to start spreading the mud. Now this is not easy. Oh man, this looks hard. Just put the notch in. Yeah, okay. go this way. This way? Yep, that's it. It's my first time doing wall and floor time. This um, looked easy, but it's not. It's pretty hard, especially putting down the um, mud. So yeah, it's good giving it a go. Tiling around the fixtures in a home requires accurate measuring, so you do need to know your maths. You also need it to calculate costs and quantities. Okay, Nick, this is a tile splitter. This is score and break. So every tile you split, you've just got to take the sharpness off the edge. And what do you do that for? Just so it doesn't cut your fingers. Okay. Because it's like glass. Things start to get tricky when you're cutting the corners. Now the only thing that'll cut ceramic or porcelain, any tile, is a diamond blade. Oh, 
I actually think he's performed pretty well on the wing. Up the front, he's been pretty strong. And in the ruck with the bucket, I think that was pretty choice. So for a Waikato supporter, I think he's doing all right. Mike's passion for the job lies in its variety and creativity. Next day, Nick gets taken on a tiki tour of some of his favourite work. OK, Nick, so this is where the skill level comes into it, with tiling. You're um, looking at polished porcelain tiles, some beautiful tiled showers in the bathrooms and en suite. Some people have a natural flair for tiling. It can be quite artistic. OK, here's another example, Nick, of um, what the client wanted. They had the stone and didn't really know what to do with it. So we came up with a design with the timber and the stone together. The stone looks beautiful. Uh, the timber reflects on the rest of the house where there's solid flooring in there. Tiles play one of their most important roles in bathrooms. Back at the work site, a new bathroom is nearly finished. So this is probably the most important area in tiling for floor and wall. It has to be right, there's no room for error. So there's the stone inserts up the walls, just the white tiles on the wall, and the 45 on the floor. So that creates a natural valley for the water to flow down to the waste. Today, Russell Allison, the BC ITO training advisor, has a meeting here at the worksite. In Waikato, there are 34 apprentices doing a floor and wall tiling qualification. Ben Smith, one of Mike's apprentices, is being checked out today. OK, Ben, uh, where are we at, mate? Um, yeah, we finished these ones. The Wall and Floor Tiling National Certificate is a hands-on qualification, and Russell's regular meetings with employers keep him up to date with a trainee's progress. Thanks, Thank Russell. You. We'll see you again. Yes. So, uh, Ben, are you enjoying floor and wall tiling? Yeah, it's a pretty sweet job, eh? Oh, yeah. So, uh, what's the best thing you look at at the end of the day from just coming home, you know, um, from the job? When you finish a job and you see how happy the clients are, oh, yeah. that's really good, eh? Tea break over, Ben. The tiles laid yesterday need to be finished off. So what do we do, uh, grouting? Uh, it's just a finishing touch to the tiles. Just makes it look nice. Okay. And you can choose, like, a whole range of colours, just whatever suits the tile, really. Here you go, Nick. Your turn now. Sweet. <laughs> Quite soon, Nick finds himself bogged down in the grout. And uh, how would we uh, get rid of all the stuff here? You just get a sponge and go over the whole area. And it wipes off pretty easily. Well, that wasn't too bad for your first time. So has Nick got what it takes? Definitely be quite happy to employ Nick. Um, especially with the enthusiasm that he has to be working. I really like how, you know, it's unique. The tiles and stuff, not everything looks the same. And um, the finish makes it look real good. There are two certificates in floor and wall tiling. A level two introductory qualification and a level four trade level qualification. You need to have a good understanding of maths, reading and writing. NCEA Level 1 or 2 Maths and English is preferred. If you are creative and have an eye for detail, then the BC ITO Apprenticeship in Floor and Wall Tiling is for you. Well, could you see yourself carving out a career as a floor and wall tiler? If you think it's worth a look, then check out more information about this career and all the careers featured on the shows on our website. So during the break, go grab that pen and paper. I'll give you all those details at the end of the program. When we come back, we find out if Benjamin has the right spark to become an electrician. This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job, and if you're thinking about a career, or maybe you want to change careers, then stay tuned, because this show could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. Take Benjamin. His ideal career lies in the electrical trade. So, let's see how he gets on as he gets the chance to try some electrical work in the real world. Hello, I'm Benjamin. I am 16 years old. I've done a bit of electrical work before with my granddad, but I uh, haven't done much, so everything's still a big mystery to me. Prepare to be illuminated, Ben, as Dave Burt shows you the secrets of electrical engineering. He's been a Sparky for 28 years and now manages 25 staff for the company he owns, Team Cabling. Time is money, so they're off to the first job. We definitely want to have people with a little bit of personality because they're working one-on-one -on -one with the customers. They need to have the ability to get on with people. And certainly they've got to have an aptitude towards um, the academic side of the job as well as the practical side of the job. So we really want to get all round us. OK, Benjamin, we've got a couple of jobs we need to do in this house today. The first one we have to do is um, put a new PowerPoint up in behind this TV. 
so they don't see the horrible cord hanging down. First thing we'll do is just disconnect everything. Cool. It's off. Great. Right, now that's isolated, we can get started. Now look, Benjamin, you can see that when they've um, terminated that originally, yep. what they've done is they've actually, instead of connecting onto the bare copper here, they've actually screwed down hard onto the insulation and just picked up a little bit of copper there and you can see that there's a little bit of burning there. Yep. So that's a potential fire risk. Okay. So that's something we'll need to fix up. Benjamin is going to have to be careful and thorough to make sure the job remains safe. Brilliant. You have a huge responsibility as an electrician. If you don't happen to be in the right place at the right time or doing the right things or following the right safety precautions, you know, that, that can end your life or the life of your, of your, of your customer. Back. The first thing an apprentice learns on the job is how to strip a cable. Cut that back. Let me show you again. Yeah, maybe. The second thing an apprentice learns on the job is how to strip a cable. I can assure you after about 20,000 of these, it all gets easier. <laughs> you get it then. That's it. Perfect. You need to push that down a little bit further than that. The wires are fixed to their corresponding yep, contacts by colour code, and the socket is screwed to the wall and tested. Hit the test button. That's good. We're in business. Cool. The type of personality or, or temperament to be um, an electrician can vary, and there's so many different segments to the industry to suit all different personality types as well. OK, Benjamin, you might as well wear this. OK. I think you might need to bring it in a few notches, though. With the basics under his belt, Ben is tasked with replacing suspended lights with new recessed halogens. Great. That's it. He's going so well, Dave's willing to leave him to it while he sorts out the next job. If you go in at that... Now we want to do the visual check, make sure that the connections are all nice and tight and in the right terminals. Yep. And uh, we can put the cover on and put it back up in the roof. Cool. Hit the switch. It works. It's a good yeah. sign. Well done. Good job. Now, on any, um, on any job, particularly these commercial jobs, um, we have to really take a lot of care about our um, health and safety. No, okay. And you'll notice what we've got here is we've got a health and safety board. Commercial sites have a wide range of hazards to deal with and a scale to the work not seen in most homes. This office has been gutted, ready for refurbishing, and Ben's first job is pre-wiring the lights. This is the position that the light fitting's going to go. Yep. So what we'll need to do is put a little loop in here, pull that back up, and put another cable tie right and hard up against that one there. Right in there? Right in there. Okay, so I've shown you what to do. Let's have a race, see the best man win. Bring it on. Good luck. Not. And there's not enough people coming into our industry to replace the people who are leaving the industry, whether they leave to go overseas or retiring. So, um, looking from that perspective, huge opportunities for someone for a long-term career. How to let you win. Look pretty bad if you didn't. He knows how to get well on the good side of a boss, but he's still looking for more tips from Josh, who has just become a qualified electrician. How did you get an apprenticeship? Um, basically, I, I started out and did a little bit of work experience, and then um, went from there, got offered an apprenticeship. What's the best bit about being an apprentice? About being an apprentice, it, I suppose it's just it's going to work and it's it's getting learning every day because you do and dealing with different different things and your aspects of the job you know, how to fix things, how to get through things, and also um, just like dealing with people and meeting people and, and working through that type of thing. That's, yeah, it's a big challenge and it's fun when you achieve that. The third thing an apprentice learns is stripping cables. Big 400 volt cables. I might give that one back to you. There's quite a bit of technical learning required. Things like sizing mains, electronics, uh, wiring up transformers. There's a lot of formulas that you have to understand and you have to apply back to the practical work that you do each day. Come on, Eve. Let's crimp that lug right down onto that cable so that's a nice, good, tight fit. That's never going to come off. Cool. That's the officer's three-phase distribution board installed, which means it's the end of the experience for Ben. OK, Benjamin, thanks for coming along. Thank you for having me. I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to be an electrical contractor and work within the electrical industry. Sure did. 
Is there anything in the job that sort of interests you the most? Putting some holes in a client's wall and in the roof and putting the downlights in, everything was very enjoyable. Great. Oh well, you finish that NCA level two and um, get practicing stripping those cables and then come back and see us in a year's time. I will do. Good on you, thanks for that. Thank you. Cheers. The National Certificate in Electrical Engineering usually takes three to four years to complete and leads to registration as an electrician. You will need to find an apprenticeship with a local electrician and then contact ETITO. The apprenticeship involves a mixture of workplace training and learning at a training provider. You'll work with the latest technology, gain skills that are in demand and set yourself up for a rewarding career. Well done Benjamin, I have no doubt that you'll make a success in the electrical trade if you do decide to go further. And thanks to Benjamin and everyone else who featured in today's program. Today there are literally thousands of careers to choose from, but that doesn't necessarily make it any easier to make a choice. So we certainly hope our programs will help you when it comes to making that all important decision. But to help you even more, here's Sarah from Career Services who has some great tips on how you can prepare for a job interview and what you can do to impress your potential employer. It's really normal to feel nervous about going to an interview, but it can help to remember that it's just a chat, so be yourself. Be honest, friendly, and put your best foot forward. If you've got this far, the employer already thinks you have most of the skills they need. The meeting is about checking your attitude and how you'd fit with the team. A good way to show them that you're really keen is to do your homework about their company and services before the interview. An employer is always impressed if they can see you've made an effort to understand their industry. Well, that's it for this week, but we'll be back again next week with another three careers and, of course, more helpful advice. If you want more information about the careers featured this week or just more info about how to make that right career choice, easy, all you've got to do is check out our program website at www.tvnz.co.nz and enter the keywords, just the job. Happy hunting. I'll catch you next week. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.